Hey everybody, it's the 3D Printing Professor, and sorry for the uh, uh, kind of impromptu, and obviously I'm not wearing a tie, uh, but this morning I had somebody in my email ask a question. They they showed this shape, and they didn't upload the model for it, but they, they said that the problem was it was too facety and they wanted it smoother. And so there was, I, I, I want to show how to do that uh, in Blender, but the first thing I have to do is I have to recreate the object because they didn't upload it, which is fine. I, I like doing this part. So I'm going to add a plane to the scene. Uh, I'm going to scale it up three times and uh, rotate it in edit mode. I'm going to rotate it 45 degrees, delete that point right there. That way it's just this line and then I'm going to move it over uh, 15 that direction. Well, I'll, I'll wait to do that in just a second and then I got to stand it up. Um, so in Blender, the way that we create this kind of screw shape is by adding the screw modifier. So I'm going to add the screw modifier right here. And the screw modifier is, it, it's, it's very dependent on the modifications that have happened to the shape. So because this one has a rotation and a scale attached to it, it's not behaving the way you'd expect it to. You could go in here and say, do it on the Y axis and we'll get what we want. Uh, but that's not, that's the object's y-axis. That's not the y-axis of the world. And I would rather just apply the rotation and do it on the world axis. Um, you notice that the screw modifier kind of takes that shape, that shape there, and what other programs would say lathes it around, which makes sense, you know, that just lathe with that shape on it. But, uh... Blender doesn't have a lathe modifier, it has the screw modifier, and since the screw modifier does the same thing that the lathe modifier does, they don't feel that they need a lathe modifier, which is efficient, but confusing. Um, but there you go. However, we do actually want the screw aspect of this, uh, but we want this to be a lot wider. So if you just move it left or right, it doesn't uh, it doesn't follow the, the, the it doesn't get wider. You have to go into edit mode, select all the points, and move the points over, and then we get like a really cool little shape. I'm also going to turn off smooth shading because this is part of the problem uh, that happened. You also notice that the, the 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 normals are wrong. You notice how the outside shadowy, but the inside's kind of uh, uh, lighter. We don't want that. We want the shadowy stuff on the inside, and you can fix that either by telling it to flip the normals with the flip or telling it to recalculate the order or uh, not both don't do both because then it'll it'll do it right and then do it wrong again um so there we go uh so now we got the object but now we want it to be a screw and in order to do that we use this screw setting and this screw setting tells it uh how high or low to put it every time it goes around and how high or low should we put it well uh, we want it to go up the height of one of these things. So if we turn off the modifier or just turn the screw to zero, we'll see that this is 8.485. So we'll just tell the screw modifier that we want to do 8.485. And we see we got a problem. Why is it going up so high? Well, that's because I have a scale modifier on here as well. That again, the, the, the screw modifier works before the scale does, unless we just hit control A and apply the scale. So now, those two points meet up perfectly and that's exactly what we want we want it to go around and meet up at the bottom and then we'll just crank up the iterations two three we'll just crank it up to 12. okay that looks pretty good now looking back at the original object um it looks to me like it's got uh, some thickness to it so we're going to uh, go back and we're going to apply another modifier uh, which is the solidify modifier, which makes things a little bit thick. And we're going to make it with a thickness of two because that's a good thickness. However, it's doing something funky here now. Uh, this is, this is, it, it's going like they're, they're separate and they each get their own walls and we want them to be connected. And why is that? Well, if I apply the screw modifier and go into edit mode and then click on one of these points, uh, you'll see that the lines that connect them to the other points go up and left and right, but not down. But there is obviously a point there, and yes, there is. But that point is is doubled. They're they're on top of each other because each of these layers don't actually connect. Uh, so to do that, all we have to do is select all the points, remove doubles. It says 117 vertices were removed. And here, let me undo it. 
and then redo the remove doubles and you see how that closes that up just the way that we want it so that's good uh, that's good and then the last thing we're going to do is we want to cut off the top and the bottom we don't want the top and the bottom to look like this and so for that I'm going to add a cube uh, I'm going to move it up one point in edit mode all the points up one that way when I scale it it stays flat to the bottom there and we actually want to move this down so that it starts there that's good scale it up and then scale it in the Z until it's as high as we want it that's about right um, and then we're going to boolean intersect it with our uh, screw here and if we go into to local view we'll see haha -ha, there we go soft top soft bottom now this isn't exactly uh, like the shape that we saw that this shape had a flat side and I didn't take that into account uh, but this will illustrate the point so um, I'm, I'm gonna go out of local view and instead I'm just gonna move this to another layer follow it and then we'll just apply the modifier so here's here's our shape we can go to edit mode and we can see the geometry up um, so what next? Uh, you know what, I'm gonna actually really quickly clean up the geometry up here. Uh, these these big n-gons here, I'm going to triangulate and alt-j to turn them into, that I think is much better. So triangulate and then alt-j. Uh, it's a much cleaner geometry that way and it'll work better for what happens. I assume that the geometry that they've got works similar to that. So what next? So what they did is they came over here and they clicked this smooth and they said, oh, look, it's smoother and that's what we wanted. No, 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 that's not what you wanted because the underlying geometry is still the same. It's just faking it for you. It's making it look good and we don't want that. So undo that. What we wanna do is we wanna want actually change the geometry, increase the geometry and make it smoother. And for that, there is the modifier subdivision surface and we'll I'll crank that up two or three times whoops okay uh, two three there we go now that looks smooth however I, I have to admit that there is a problem the top and bottom of this now are kind of roundy round and that's gonna be hard to print now we could boolean smooth that out but we could do that without changing the mess smooth modifier and I'll show you how um, I'm going to go into edit mode and into line select mode while holding down alt I'm going to click one of these lines and when you hold down alt it tries to collect cut, cut, uh, select all of the lines that are in that path um, it has to be clever sometimes with where the path is but with an object like this it's super easy and then I'm going to increase the mean crease to one do it again right here alt select that and the crease is one and that tells the mess the subdivision surface modifier that at that point keep the edge as a corner okay uh, I'll grab the top and do it again alt select mean crease and we can do any number between 0 and 1 so we could do 0.5 and it'll like almost get there but keep it a little bit roundy uh, this is this is good for when you're doing dice but you want you want the edges to be like round but you don't want to use the bevel modifier because the bevel would totally be better better for that let me show you another trick that we can do so at this point it's it's smoother it's rounder and if that's what you want great go for it but watch this if if i decide that you know what i want to keep the crease in here i can alt select that loop and i've selected the entire loop uh both inside and out i don't know quite oh wait let me turn off the view here yeah, I've selected the outside. I don't know quite how that got selected. Oh, because it's jumping across the edge here. Well, I better turn that off and hold down shift and, and click to turn it off. Um, but now I can turn that back on. And I'm going to turn the crease on to one. And now, inside and out, that is still very creasy, but the outsides have become smooth. Do you see? Uh, so here's the original pointy. And here's the modified and smooth now uh, to do this we have increased the geometry of it and you might think that there's too much geometry in there and we could decimate that and things like that but I'm not gonna worry about that for now this if this is what you want I'm gonna select the outside loop and deselect where it crosses over on the top and the bottom and show you like some point fives and stuff like that so if I 
if I decide to make the mean crease of the outside, the tip there, 0.5, like that. See how it goes not quite, if I do one, if I do one at this point, we haven't made any change other than to increase the facets around the edge. But if I do, uh, you know, 0.2, it's not quite there. Go back to zero. It, it, it like magnetizes it towards there, uh, which is really cool. But I'm going to leave it at zero because I, 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 this is the way that I would like to do it. Now, if that whole crease thing doesn't do you, if you wanted it to be woobly woobly the whole way down, hey, there you go. Uh, the crease on the top and the bottom, though, does help. Or uh, the other option is I'll just turn off the crease uh, all around. And I'll say to fix this top and the bottom, do do the trick that I did. I'll move it down just a little bit into plane. Uh, add a cube. In edit mode, move all the points of the cube up one. That way, let's zoom in on this. It's sitting on that, that XY plane. Okay. That way, when you scale it up, it's sitting on that XY plane with its center point at that XY plane. And when you scale up, it scales up around that center point. Since that center point's on the bottom, everything scales up. So scale it up until it uh, engulfs the object, except for that little bit at the bottom that you're ignoring. Uh, scale it into Z until it engulfs the object, except for the little bit at the top that you're going to cut off so that it'll be smooth. And then add a modifier. Uh, boolean intersect is the default and select just that little ring up there and then if you go to local mode you'll see ha ha there it is so that's two ways of doing it you can either do it with the uh, uh, crease modifier or if you just want to cut off the top and the bottom and make it flat then do your subdivision surface cut off the top and the bottom and make it flat the other option is in some slicers you can move it down below the build plane and it will cut off that bottom part for you so that might not even be necessary but that's how you do it there you go uh, i hope that this helps you uh increase the polygons of things but have a little bit more control so you can keep the edges and details that you want but make the parts that should be round and smoother round and smooth i i use this a lot it's it can be very difficult if you're importing a uh a STL that's all faceted because it can be difficult to select lines but a little bit of time a little bit of effort a little bit of artistry in it and you can do some good work anyways I thank you guys very much for watching I hope that this has helped and I will see you next time <laughs>